Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Nene Fujimoto, and I was the team lead for this capstone project. This semester, we had the opportunity to work with Goodwill Industries of San Diego County, a nonprofit organization that strives to provide employment and training opportunities for those with disabilities and other barriers to employment. Hi, everyone. My name is Anna Haran. I was the HR manager for this campaign. Just last year, Goodwill was forced to close its over 30 store locations in San Diego due to the pandemic. In that year, Goodwill also provided employment to more than 1,800 people in the San Diego community. In February of this year, the nonprofit provided COVID-19 vaccine appointments for San Diego senior citizens. These are just a few of the things that Goodwill can accomplish through their mission. Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany Rahana and I am the graphics and design lead. To start our research, we conducted a pre-campaign survey and interviewed two Goodwill shoppers and donors to find out what motivates and deters them to donate to charities and support nonprofit organizations. Goodwill means giving a second chance, not only for your items, but as well as your community. From the interviews, we found that people are not aware of Goodwill's six employment programs. However, they do feel more inclined to shop, donate, and support Goodwill once they learn about them. One deterrent we found was due to a rumor that Goodwill employees with disabilities were not earning adequate income. However, our interviewees expressed that their purpose for shopping and donating at Goodwill is due to how sustainable and convenient it is. Hi, I'm Julia Gallegos and I worked on the research and logistics teams. In our secondary research, we found that there are more benefits to spring cleaning than just decluttering your house. A UCLA study found that donating your items lowers stress levels and improves mental health, as it's connected to low cortisol levels. We also found that the desire to help others is associated with life satisfaction and current happiness. The research suggests that it's emotionally rewarding to give to others in your community. In other words, helping others makes us happy. Finally, we found that donors expect the social enterprise model, where their donations directly benefit the mission of the organization. Donors take into account executive compensation when they're deciding whether to donate to a charity. Trust is the most important factor between a nonprofit and its donors. Hi everyone, I'm Courtney Patillo. I was the research lead. You might recognize me from some of Goodwill's reels. And if you don't, you should definitely check them out after this presentation. Moving back into our research, seeing our secondary research and conducting our interviews, we got a better idea of how people feel about nonprofits. We saw what motivates them and also could deter them. So we wanted to take a deeper dive into Goodwill's publics. So our most important part of our research that we conducted was a survey. And we designed this survey to send out to Goodwill's VIP email members. It measured some main constructs, including knowledge, attitude, donation likelihood, issue involvement, and also brand loyalty. We got around 280 valid responses, so this was a great number for us to work with. This survey definitely shined the brightest light in what direction we wanted to take this campaign because we knew that our client wanted to raise awareness about their six employment programs and how your support and your quality donations help support and run these local employment programs. So when we administered this survey, we saw that people had a moderately high level of knowledge about Goodwill, which is great because we know Goodwill is such a reputable brand. But when asked, we saw that 61% of our respondents were familiar with how Goodwill's funds were being used locally, with 39% of our respondents remaining unfamiliar and unaware of how Goodwill's funds are being used locally versus nationally. We saw this in our secondary research, how this could actually be a deterrent if people think that their funds and their support is just going to a national organization as opposed to locally supporting their communities. And since we know that Goodwill's funds funnel directly back into our local community and support these amazing employment programs, we wanted to base a lot of our messaging around this. We also saw that 81% of our respondents heard or knew about one or more of Goodwill's employment programs with 11% being from social media. Moving into social media, we took a closer look at Goodwill's platforms and we saw that Instagram had the highest engagement rate among all four platforms. So we knew we wanted to use Instagram moving forward in our campaign and more, speci more specifically our social media campaign. 
On their Instagram post between January 21st and April 13th, we saw, this was before our social media campaign ran, we saw that they had an average reach of 500 users per post and their average, engage, their average engagement rate was 1.31%. Sticking to Instagram, we wanted to take a look at who our competitors were. And surprisingly, and a little ironically, we saw that Goodwill of Southern California was one of our biggest competitors on Instagram. We saw that they had great engagement rates and they focused a lot on reposting Goodwill shoppers and showcasing their finds. We saw that they had success in their static posts, their stories, their highlight posts, and also their reels. So we knew we wanted to pull from this inspiration into our own campaign. The second competitor we saw was a social media influencer, Sterling Myers. And she focuses mainly on clothing and styling, but we also saw that she had great engagement rates and we wanted to move some of these ideas into our campaign. Moving towards our target demographic for Instagram, we wanted to use some of these lighthearted clothing videos, hauls that we could incorporate our messaging to, to reach our, dem our target demographic. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jenna Greer. I was part of the messaging and graphics teams. Our team took our research and condensed it down into targeted strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we saw that were present in Goodwill San Diego's current situation that we really wanted to center our informative campaign around. As Courtney mentioned, Goodwill is a highly recognized brand name, and there are plenty of committed shoppers and donors in the area. However, we did see a lack of awareness about how donations are used, questions about whether funds are used nationally or locally, and a general lack of knowledge about Goodwill's mission. We also saw that some rumors and misinformation in the media deterred otherwise committed shoppers and donors from being more present and active in Goodwill San Diego's community. We saw an opportunity here to really calm these threats and redirect public view back to what's really important that Goodwill San Diego provides for the community and that their amazing programs and missions really help out the San Diego community neighbors. Luckily within the timeline of our campaign, Goodwill San Diego had a new store opening in Escondido. And we foresaw this newsworthy event as a great opportunity to center our pitches, send out pitches to new media and try to really get, generate more positive media coverage. We also saw an opportunity to grow social media platforms and use tactics that hadn't been explored yet, as Courtney mentioned, like Instagram Reels. We knew that a heavier social media presence would boost Goodwill San Diego's community, would boost knowledge about Goodwill San Diego in the community. Our research led us to create one simple problem statement that has guided our entire campaign. We concluded that San Diego communities remain unaware of how their do donations are used locally and remain neutral on helping others find jobs, despite the thousands of people that Goodwill San Diego has helped over the past couple of years. Our team then set out to change this narrative. Hi everyone, my name's Hannah Fogelstrom and I worked on the logistics and the graphics team. After researching the attitudes towards Goodwill, we moved into planning. Based on our research, we drafted two specific goals and three objectives for our campaign. Our first goal was to educate Goodwill's donors and shoppers of the previously stated mission. The second goal was to strengthen the local community's attitude towards goodwill. In order to reach these goals, we set out to increase the knowledge of their mission and to strengthen the local community's attitude towards goodwill, both by 10%. Also, we aim to increase goodwill's engagement rate on Instagram by 2%, and we set out to reach all of these by April 2021. Marissa, your audio is not working. Maybe try without the headphones. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Hello everyone, my name is Marissa Taylor and I served as the logistics lead for this campaign. As Hannah mentioned in our objectives, we really wanted to change the community's knowledge of Goodwill's mission and inspire them to choose Goodwill first when looking to donate their belongings or shop around for some things to refresh their closets or homes. With that said, our target publics for this campaign were shoppers such as resellers and bargain hunters, donors and job seekers. Specifically for our social media campaign, we targeted 18 to 24 year olds. 
Hi, I'm Sarah Katsianis, and I was the messaging and publicity lead. And my team and I conducted major themes with specific supporting talking points to go under each of these main themes, all driven by insight from our formative research that you just heard about from my amazing team. This is messaging that went into several creative social media posts and reels, as well as press releases and media hits to um, in the form of emails. Our first one is based off of the interviews we personally conducted. Since not a lot of customers knew about the mission, we wanted to get our mission into their vision, making sure that people know that their donations go towards helping people facing barriers and disabilities. Goodwill helps grow working professionals with online job applications, resumes, and interview preparations, which flows into our second theme, empowering professionals. And some talking points under this main theme include Goodwill hires people through six educational programs. Anyone in the community can use these employment programs, all of which are completely free. You can come in without experience and leave with opportunity. And one of my favorite talking points, Goodwill will give you the good skills that you need to thrive in the workplace. And the third theme that we use, tying back to the secondary research that Julia mentioned on how people love to do good because it makes them feel good, we created Your Charity Feeds Our Mission. The money made from reselling your gifts is invested right back into our programs, which help people get jobs often at our very own store. And finally, in order to help build back any trust that may have been lost, and to help change the attitude within the local community. Our last theme is based on what Courtney mentioned as one of the most important things we learned through the pre-campaign survey, which is that customers weren't too familiar with where Goodwill's funds were being used. So we created our charity runs on transparency. A few talking points underneath this theme includes Goodwill San Diego is 100% local and 100% not-for-profit, even though Goodwill San Diego is a part of an international organization. They operate completely locally. So when you donate locally, your gifts stay here to help your neighborhood. Hi, I'm Taylor Fredericks and I was part of the messaging and logistics team. To circle back, when we initially met with the client, the main goal was to create branded messaging and also to help spread awareness of their overall mission and programs within the San Diego community. With that being said, our team created a social media campaign tailored towards the already existing brand of Goodwill and not to try to change the most public piece of their brand. By posting on social media, we wanted to strive to expand Goodwill's reach and move into a new demographic that's on Instagram more often. And this would include our target publics that Marissa mentioned, such as 18 to 24 year olds, as well as their already existing uh, followers on Instagram, which was made up of 84% of women. Our biggest focus on Instagram was to grow their engagement organically. And the biggest tactic that we had with this was reels to kind of shift that engagement towards the target publics that I've mentioned. And we wanted to reel them in per se. So for those of you who aren't familiar with reels, they are short form videos on Instagram. And you'll see here on the right, this one was our first reel that we posted and features Courtney, our research lead, and I'm proud to say that every reel we created was made by someone on this team that you'll hear today. We were able to implement and post nine reels categorized under clothing, Goodwill's mission, and donating higher end goods. The first reel that we posted, this one here, um, saw more than 5 million views. And across all nine reels, we garnered more than 21,000 views, which was a really, really great number considering that we were the first to kind of post reels for Goodwill, San Diego. Our second tactic to grow um, San, Diego's, uh, San Diego Goodwill's account organically was through static posting in a campaign that we coined Six Days of Opportunity. So you'll see here on the right, our first post was the Young Adult Program. And for, we ran the campaign for six days and we featured a different program that they offered every single day with approved messaging that Sarah spoke about and engaging captions to really connect with the users and talk back and forth in the comment section. And then across the whole social media campaign, every reel and every static post also had a Instagram story to go with it to also kind of organically increase that engagement on their platform. 
During the time of the campaign, April 14th to April 23rd, we had an average reach of 173 accounts and an average engagement rate of 4%, which was a 2.69% from before we posted at all. And then staying on the path of this campaign being a knowledge and informative based campaign, we created a press kit to make it easy for reporters to learn about Goodwill and to access marketing materials and any stories and material and any photos and materials they may need for future stories. So the press kit includes um, a fact sheet, frequently asked questions, leadership bios, um, press materials, and then also quotes. So you'll see here on the right, we included the fact sheet that we made. And then on the left is the leadership bio. So it kind of has an about section of Goodwill's entire executive team. And then the press kit is all the most recent information about Goodwill San Diego and was all written and made organically by our team. As you've been hearing, we really wanted to work hard to change the attitude of Goodwill San Diego. So we honed in on media coverage by building mutually beneficial relationships between Goodwill and the community. We strategized the best angles we could take when pitching to the media. The, um, one, the first one had the obvious hit, the brand new Goodwill in Escondido. Another angle we took was more of a reflective side about how a year ago, a bunch of businesses shut down due to the pandemic, but now businesses are back open, including Goodwill San Diego, and all of their services are currently being offered. And our final angle that we took was on the career centers that helped grow working professionals. And we offered the media outlets the opportunity to job shadow an employee. We pitched these angles to 10 new publications to Goodwill San Diego, including San Diego Magazine, East County Magazine, the Cougar Chronicles, the Coronado Times, just to name a few. And behind those publications are journalists, which believe it or not, are people too. So my team and I were able to plant seeds and begin these mutually beneficial relationships with 10 new journalists for Goodwill San Diego. Hi everyone, my name is Ruby Nunez and I was part of the research and messaging team. Throughout this campaign, we always kept in mind that Goodwill San Diego is a nonprofit organization. Because of this, we wanted to create organic pathways of growth to spread the awareness of their key messages. As a result, we used all of our resources to focus on Goodwill's uh, social media presence as well as their user engagement. And in the end, we are proud to say that we were able to make a difference without spending any money on our campaign. Now let's get to the fun stuff, the results. We'd love to show off some of our measurables. We are proud to announce that we received news coverage from two new publications, KPBS and the Coast News Group. For KPBS, a radio story about Goodwill San Diego aired twice on 89.5 FM, and we were ecstatic about this coverage because the radio story featured a Goodwill employee that covered and included almost all of our messaging. Specifically, she talked about empowering professionals because she herself, the interviewee, previously went through a training program. Another main theme she hit perfectly was our charity runs on transparency. About a year ago, she was let go from Goodwill San Diego, but she stressed how helpful they were, how they offered her a check, and then they called her back as soon as they were up and running again. So overall, she was a perfect advocate to strengthen the trust and change brand attitude in the local community. And North Coast News Group published a written piece. We were really happy about this because their readership totaled over 100,000 people, not just how many people we were reaching. We were really excited about the unreached people group that our clients specifically expressed a desire to target and reach, which was North County. Following our six days of opportunity on Instagram, Goodwill's profile saw a 0.5% increase in their, 20, in their 18 to 24 year old follower demographic, which as I mentioned earlier was one of our target publics for this campaign. We saw a 1.2% total follower increase, 18.9% increase of accounts reached, and as Taylor mentioned, a 2.69% increase in engagement. Of our audience insights, we saw that 40.6% fell within the 25 to 34 age range. Overall, these results align with our campaign objectives to expand the knowledge of Goodwill's mission and programs in the community and increase engagement on Instagram. 
Hi everyone, my name is Sophia Durantz and I worked on the research and logistics teams. So in order to wrap up our campaign, we sent out a post campaign survey to again evaluate that same group of VIP shoppers and gauge these main constructs that we had measured the first time, like knowledge, attitude, donation likelihood, issue involvement, and their brand loyalty. And on this round of the survey, we got 290 responses, and we particularly paid attention to the two questions that covered people's awareness of how Goodwill's funds were being used locally versus nationally, and their awareness about Goodwill's programs. And what we found was there was a 5% increase in awareness of Goodwill's funds being used locally versus nationally, this number went from 61% to 66% of people being aware. And this means that people have more knowledge about the ways their generous gifts are being funneled right back into their community. And as we saw from our secondary research, trust is the most important thing between donors and nonprofits. So having a better understanding of the way that Goodwill operates can help to increase that in the community. We also saw a 7% increase in awareness of Goodwill's programs. And this means that the community has a better understanding of the ways that Goodwill provides opportunities to people here in the San Diego community. And the more that people know about these programs, the more good that Goodwill is going to be able to continue to accomplish through their mission. And lastly, we saw that the percentage of VIP shoppers who heard about Goodwill's programs through social media also increased by 3% from the first time that we surveyed them. And this is a really exciting start that Goodwill can continue to build on on social media in order to reach this 18 to 24 year old demographic even more. To wrap up our campaign, our team created a list of recommendations for Goodwill San Diego. These recommendations aim to raise awareness around Goodwill San Diego's mission within the community. We recommend using Instagram Reels to convey the mission and messaging to target the younger demographic that we see possible growth with on Instagram. Using local virtual stylists and influencers on social media to provide content that will keep the target demographic of 18 to 24 year olds engaged posting paid Facebook ads with A-B testing since we saw a spike in engagement when the Goodwill San Diego Facebook page posted their first ad in April. Reaching San Diego schools in affluent areas to collect higher end and quality donations. And lastly, attending San Diego swap meets to not only sell but collect sellers quality donations. So by implementing our tactics and following our recommendations, we strongly believe that Goodwill will continue to make a meaningful connection with its community and gain further recognition for its programs and services. This semester has been an incredible journey for all of us and we, my team would like to especially thank Darlene, Gustavo, Kimberly, and the rest of the staff at Goodwill for giving us the tools and resources to make this campaign come to life. And lastly, thank you all so much for being here today. We will, we will be now including all of our LinkedIn accounts in the chat. We would love to connect with you all. This concludes our presentation and we are now more than happy to answer any questions.